You've learned many commands and concepts so far, which have enabled you to use Unix more fluently. The next step is to compile a group of commands into a single document called a script. Just as a movie script tells an actor what to do, where to go, and what to say, a Unix script, also known as a shell script, tells the terminal what commands to run. This makes it easier to edit and execute large blocks of code, and to move the code among different directories. Before we begin scripting, you should download an appropriate code editor. Windows users can download Notepad++, and Mac users should download Text Wrangler. Once you've downloaded Text Wrangler, open it and write this code on the first line. This line of code is called a shebang, and it means that the following code should be interpreted with the bash shell and follow bash syntax. Next, write one of the for loops you saw previously, such as this. It is good coding practice to indent the body of a for loop or a conditional statement, usually with a tab or a few spaces. This allows the eye to quickly see both the structure of the code and where certain commands are located. It is also helpful to include comments with the pound sign. Anything written after the pound sign will not be interpreted by the shell, but is useful for the reader to know what the command is doing. For example, before the loop, we could write a comment about how the following code will print the numbers 1 through 3. Now click on File, Save As, and call it printnums.sh with the .sh extension signifying that the file is a shell script, and save it to the desktop. In a terminal, navigate to the desktop and then type bash printnums.sh to run the shell script. You could also run the command by typing dot slash printnums.sh. This will run all of the code in the script just as if you had typed it out by hand. This is a simple example, but you can see how you can add as many lines of code as you want. Now let's see how we can run a larger, more useful script. Go to this link, and then click on makefsltimings.sh. Click on the raw button to see the raw text. You can either right-click anywhere on the page and save it as a script, or you can copy and paste the code into Text Wrangler. Once you've done that, save it as makefsltimings.sh and put it in the Flanker directory. Let's take a look at what this code does. Notice that we have a shebang indicating that the script is written in bash. We also have comments after each pound sign marking the major sections of code. The first block of code is a conditional statement that checks whether a file called subglist exists. If it doesn't, then list each subject's directory and redirect those names into a file called subjectList.txt. This brings up an important concept, wildcards. There are two types of wildcards you will often use. The first is an asterisk, which looks for one or more characters. And the second is a question mark, which matches a single character. To see how this works, navigate to the Flanker directory and then type make dir sub-100. If you type ls-d sub-asterisk, it will return every directory that starts with sub- whether it is sub-01 or sub-100. The asterisk wildcard doesn't discriminate whether the directory is 6 characters long or 600. It will match and return all of them, as long as they start with sub- the other type of wildcard is the question mark, which matches a single occurrence of any character. If you type ls-d sub dash two question marks, it will only return directories with two integers after the dash. In other words, it will return sub-01 through sub-26, but not sub-100. The body of the for loop contains another thing that is new, a command called awk. Awk is a text processing command that prints columns from a text file. It is a complex command, and we won't go into all the details, 
but here are the basics about how it works. If you go into a subject's func directory and type cat, one of the TSV files, it will return all of the text in that file. For our fMRI analysis, we want the columns that specify the onset time and duration, as well as the number one as a placeholder in the last column. You can redirect the output of this command into the input for the awk command by using a vertical pipe. Then you can use conditional statements in awk to print the onset times for specific experimental conditions and redirect that output into a corresponding text file. This is discussed in more detail in the book chapter in the link below. Now navigate back to the directory containing all of the subjects, remove the sub 100 directory, and then run the script. It will take a few moments, but it will create timing files for all of your subjects. You can inspect them by going into each subject's func directory and use the cat command. Each one should have three columns, and they should look something like this. Scripts and wildcards give you more flexibility with your code and can save you countless hours of labor. Just imagine typing out each of the commands in our script for each subject. Later on, we'll use these scripts to automate the analysis of an entire data set. But to do that, we'll need to learn about one more command for manipulating text, the sed command. Let's take a look.